Good luck. Alright, so I get sent to this game. We're going to play either third foul rook or central foul rook, or we might very well get bishop exchange. Uh, I'm checking my audio. Let me boost the audio slightly. Somehow it's quieter than normal. Um, so... Let me see what I would prefer to play. I think this is fine with me. Despite this obvious declaration of static rook, and despite my opponent's strong preference to play bishop exchange quite frequently, I think this is still okay. Um, so... I could push my third foul pawn against this. Oh wait, but we don't have an open bishop diagonal. Hmm. So we encounter an interesting move order here. It has me wondering somewhat, um, do I protect my bishop, or do I just outright close this diagonal? Um, the bishop exchange in general favors the static rook player, so I should prefer to close this diagonal in most situations. Um, we're not encountering this through a typical static rook move ordering, or typical bishop exchange move ordering as far as I can tell. So leaving this bishop exchange on the table doesn't seem to suit my interests. So yeah, it seems they've got some initiative through this move order that otherwise they would not have attained. Um, this is a target. I do want to play my king to the right at least once here. If the bishops were on this open diagonal, I might delay moving my king. In this case, there isn't a need for such a delay. Um, but yeah, I believe this silver, whether or not it advances to 6-7 or 5-7, uh, this advancement can be quite useful. Um, hmm. So I could push this. I'm trying to reason about why would I not push it? Well, because they could move their rook over, bring the silver up, and break the file open. There isn't a need to push it right away. Um. I haven't seen this exact position before. I think this is sensible. I'm not sure which castle I am building because their attack is entirely on the left side of the board. Um, so it's possible that Cozy Castle, 
however irregular for me might make sense with this. Um, yeah, this also signals a possible intent to build on Aguma. We'll see if we can get them to decide against that. Alright, so yeah, both of us are not interested in that castle. Um, it's still not wild about putting my king on this diagonal. So Cozy Castle might be of interest. The head of the bishop is extremely weak here. Um, hmm. Yeah, we're going to play Cozy Castle and see how this goes. You've got my interest. It's true that a hundred times at least I've built Mino. This time we're doing something different. Mino is a good castle. It just doesn't seem appropriate against whatever it is that they're doing. So I'm anticipating this bishop moving here, striking this pawn. I'm also anticipating bringing my silver up to hit their bishop. So they might close this diagonal voluntarily. Um... Okay, so we complete the cozy castle. And see what their intent is. It seems... Well, we'll find out. In just a second, we'll have more information. But this looks like a decent place for my Silver General. So, I was going to say it seems like they're trending toward building Anaguma despite this... Or they might be building, like, Millennium, or I don't know what. They're building something interesting. In the same way that I built something a bit different than what I usually do. Um, having moved this silver is actually pretty committal. As is this pawn advance. So, this, um, curiously, this means I can open this diagonal for my bishop now. Hmm. And switch to playing fourth file rook. Is that what we want to do? Do I have better? Well, no, switching my Rook's file doesn't gain me anything here. Um, opening this diagonal helps because then I can push this other pawn next. But it's a bit complicated, isn't it? If I push this first and this silver moves up, Then, if I tuck my bishop back, where would I put it? I guess back here. That protects my pawn. 
Well, no, if I push this pawn, they could push this one. And it's difficult for me to activate my rook. My position is best if I activate my rook, not necessarily my bishop. Um, if I push this, if this silver moves, I can move my silver. They take a pawn, I take a pawn. That's interesting. Or we exchange silvers and even... I don't know. Yeah, opening the line for my bishop can't be bad, can it? Even if bishops do exchange, I'm not poorly off. The only thing I'm concerned of is them trying to open this file, but that's where my rook is, so how bad could that be? There's something I'm not understanding about this. And I could sit on it for longer and longer. I could just make a move. And so we just make a move. The thing I don't like about this is that it blocks my silver's entry to the same square. Um... The thing I do like is that, it's, well, my bishop's active. Um, I mean, yeah, they're building um, the Yagra castle or fortress. That's okay. Um, to me, somehow this feels right, because I don't think I'm going to get my rook uh, promoted on this line right next to the silver. So instead, we're going to fight for control of this file. Okay. confused. Again, I'm not sure, but like somehow this seems thematic in some way. And the idea is that I don't want their bishop roaming the entire board. If they move this bottom gold, eventually I have threats to... Well, no, the bishop covers this. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? Um... Still, somehow this feels appropriate, despite my bishop being over here. Let's 
So yeah, I've started an attack, or I've started claiming some space around my castle. I've not moved pieces yet. Uh, I guess this is more dangerous than I'm imagining. Because this, I haven't seen other people do this sort of thing. There's got to be something terrifically dangerous about what I'm doing. But I don't see it. I am debating, like, how am I going to fill these squares? Where are my generals going? I'm not sure. Maybe I move the lance at some point just to evade capture by this bishop. But yeah, I think I've played too many different ideas here. I just don't see how they split whatever it is that I've done. Okay, I see. Yeah, that's clever. Um, that is really clever. Just building a more solid castle. No need to do anything insane here, is there? Um, hmm. Well, that's disappointing. Yeah, now I see a clear idea for them. Right, well, I guess I'm going to try to attack this. Is this going to... Will this attack succeed? I'm skeptical. <laughs> At best. But yeah, if they push this, I could try to apply pressure. And I think they just reinforce this point, and I'm out of luck. But if I don't do something... This position is going to become difficult, so I'm going to do something, but I don't like it. Well, no, I could also try to push, try to force this bishop to move, and then try to open this line somehow, but it seems hard. The thing I liked about a potential exchange on this square is that my knight could attack. 
but then the knight becomes the target very quickly and cannot continue attacking. So I need another idea. Something less fragile. Opening this diagonal seems to be a mistake. Hmm. So earlier I remarked how difficult it would be to get my rook to promote on the fourth file. Um, perhaps dreams do come true. Um. Hmm. It's also tempting to push the third file pawn. I mean, it has to be correct to push it, because it's in the way. It gives them a pawn, which is a little scary, but everything else going on here seems to suggest that's necessary for me to push this. I push, they take, I push this rook over, I take, they take, I take here, it's okay. Fireworks. But, like I said, I have to act now, otherwise my position gets very difficult. Um, I don't understand. I'm quite excited, truly. I think we were both looking forward to such a combination. So I'm attacking this silver but also my rook has some potential here. I think I perhaps overestimated my rook's potential by a lot. Um, on the other hand, exchanging this rook for a bishop would not be terrible. See, yeah, my king's position is special. Um, hmm. One thing to watch out for is if they do exchange the bishop for a rook, there's definitely rook drop threats. Um, doesn't seem easy to deal with. So yeah, if they do a bishop drop, I think I just have to take the silver. If they take the rook, maybe I take a gold. Maybe I take the bishop. Probably we take the bishop. Then there's a rook drop and stuff gets really messy. But maybe it's okay.
So option one is the rook runs away, they drop a pawn, and we cry. Option two is we take this... Is there some option three of, like, just protecting the rook and trying to stop rook drops from happening? I don't think so. I mean, there's a bishop drop back here. They move the rook to hit my bishop, and not a whole lot good happens. I think this is the best I can aim for. Um, didn't expect that. Oh, I could just move the rook away, can't I? Yeah, let's try this. This looks interesting enough to try. I think this is okay. This diagonal is such a focal point of this board that I don't think a bishop for rook exchange is like a huge loss. I had been briefly thinking about what if I just retreat the rook all the way back, which has some merit also. Um, hmm. This is why they say don't run from a fork, isn't this? I mean, it's not a fork, but the same principle. Just running leads to more running. Um. My brain is not working. Not at full capacity, anyway. 
Yes, their rook promotes, and so we have a dragon to contend with. Both of our kings are really exposed. Mine seems more exposed, but... I have a silver, they have a knight. They're probably threatening soon to take my knight. But I can also try to attack things. Yeah, trying to move the rook away and promote on this fourth file seems too slow. I think they have to take my rook. I have to recapture. They do rook takes. Um, and they haven't figured everything out yet there. It's clever. I don't know, to be honest. My time is limited. I have to pick a move. So I select this. This looks extremely risky. I just can't figure this out. Somehow I phantomed that I have another bishop in hand here. I just don't. Am I soon to gain a bishop? Maybe. But I don't have it. It's different.
I don't think that's right. This is getting complicated. My problem is that I've placed all of my attackers. I have no reinforcements. Um, for me to continue... Well, I need to protect my king now. But I don't have very many pieces to protect with. Sanjudio. Sanjudio Hmm. 
I don't like this. Hmm. I guess the good news is I have many pawns in hand. The other good news is that they lead the attack with a rook. I've been looking and looking and looking and looking at this, and I don't see how they take advantage. Show me. Sanju Sanjubio Sanjubio Yonjubio Gojubio Itch Ni San Shi
30秒40秒50秒三十秒。四十秒。五十秒。一、二、三、四、五。三十秒。四十秒。五十秒。一、二、三、四、五、六、七。三十秒。四十秒。On drop was a mistake. It's too close. 五十秒。一、二、三、四。三十秒三十秒。四十秒。五十秒。一、二、三、四、五、六、七。
don't understand. Oh, this is just to protect the rook. Problem is that that doesn't actually protect the rook. But it allows my horse to be closer to my king. I still think this rook and ability to place a pawn in front of it poses a huge threat. That's why I'm trying to get this rook to move away. But also we've trapped it, so... <sighs> Basically I'm forcing my opponent to checkmate me if there is a checkmate. And if there's not, then we just win. Okay, that's a free silver. Bishops are nasty pieces. They're quite effective pieces at any rate. Um... Thanks for the game. Thus concludes Tourney to Master. Uh, yeah, given the hour of day, since this is an international tournament, it's entirely fair. Players have to go after the match. This is not uh, the teaching ladder, so yeah. Uh, it's entirely respectable and reasonable to have to go after a tournament game. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at it. Our opponent put us under severe pressure right from the opening. Um, yeah, toward the end, if you heard my keys click, I was just double-checking that my overlay was set correctly. Usually I do that much earlier in the game. Uh, but yeah, good game. Um... So, yeah, here I open the diagonal for my bishop, and I built Cozy Castle instead of building the Mino that we always build. I've been waiting to see, like, which castle my opponent's building, even though here, plainly, it seems to be Yagra, um, simply speaking. Here, I'm not so familiar with all the various forms of Yagra. Uh, it makes sense that this gold protects 5-1. So, yeah, I actually kind of like this. Um, so what else happened here? Oh yeah, and then this looks brilliant, honestly. Um, I would fully expected things to continue, just build Silver Crown. Maybe bring, redirect the bishop some other way. 
Or, well, no, actually, that's not so bright, because the bishop is, like, so close to the king. Still, this claiming space seemed quite reasonable, and it is Gota's privilege to be able to play for a draw, but, um, to play for Sinichite. So, it is my obligation to bring an attack instead of just moving things gradually up the board. Uh, I should eventually feel the need or, um, yeah, need really to build an attack. So it's true I brought my knight out in case this happened to be the moment where the board opened up, but I think at present they seem to control when the position actually opens unless I do this. And if I do this, I'm not sure that I like it at this time because exchanging bishops makes it easier for their rook to promote. And my king is not as comfortable as it could be. Um, on the other hand, playing something like this could be quite risky. So, um, yeah, I didn't really know what was going on. I kind of liked this pawn move, taking more space. But maybe in retrospect... Maybe they could have put some questions to my position, too. I don't know. It's confusing to me. Um, also, I was a bit concerned about this being playable at some point when they have a pawn in hand. Right now they don't have a pawn in hand, but I was concerned this could happen. Uh, it would have been easier for them to get a pawn in hand earlier. Um, like, okay, this is fine, but at some point, I don't know, something like this, transitioning us between various things could get them upon in hand, but they don't need to press an attack. That's my responsibility. Um, and maybe they missed this, or maybe it's just not as good as I think. Uh, but I saw that okay, they're going to force my hand and get some pieces and pawns exchanged. I'd rather do it on my terms where I can try to activate my rook. Um, yeah, I take a silver. I was... Um, yeah, I was surprised this, but maybe I shouldn't be. Um, what surprised me is that the gold in that shape allows me to do this kind of fork, which is really inconvenient for them. I mean, yes, I have a bishop in hand, so like if they take here, there's other stuff I could do, but somehow moving the gold away, I didn't. It seemed a bit loosening. So I expected this, and I didn't know what I was going to do here, to be honest. Um. I've been thinking about something like this, I guess. I've been thinking, do I just put the bishop down? Do I like try to stop their bishop from re-entering, even though I can't really do that? I don't know. Um, maybe what they did was actually best. But, yeah, maybe also there wasn't a need to do this in the first place. Uh, in the end game, you thought silver 2-9 looked pretty threatening rather than knight 2-5. Yeah, let's take a look. So, we get into the end game pretty soon here. Every time they're delaying activating this rook surprised me. Um, I guess they delay it once. Again, yeah, that's a, a sensible defensive move. I just don't know the defense is what's called for here. So, because of this pin, the bishop being undefended, things get messy. Um, I could show the variation, I suppose. Oh, right, so they take here. Yeah, that's check. And that's bad. So they have to do something with this really awkward rook. But now my silver's a little awkward, for at least for one turn. And the only way I could find, or the best way I could find to get out of it is promote the bishop. 
And yeah, this rook and combination is, it looks really scary. We'll let the engines tell us someday how that should have gone. I wouldn't have led with the rook here unless I had some, unless I knew it would work. I'd start with some of the lighter pieces first and then slam the rook down at some critical moment. Or if I'm playing the rook, maybe I'd play it here. Yes, I'd play something like this against it, but maybe it's fine. Um, taking a lance, adding to the attack. Uh, instead, we have the Rook Sacrifice and then this. And you were thinking Silver 2-9. It's starting to look at this. There's a lot to look at. So I wonder what about King 4-9 here? I guess, oh, yeah, they have pawns in hand, don't they? Oh, wait, hang on. My silver accidentally covers this, which is pretty important. Um, hmm. Yeah, I wonder how to continue. Maybe this is a threat that at some later moment could be very strong. Ah, silver drop 3-8. Okay. I guess, yeah, that does corral... Oh, hang on. What about this? So if I move the king up, yeah, that does corral my gold general. Um, here, I guess that's still really strong. Uh, I have to run... Hmm. Oh, Rook, Rook 4, 9, Rook 4, 8. Okay, let's take a look. So, do this. Gotta take. Um. This, mm, so many ideas. It feels like they should have a faster attack than I saw during the game. I'm just not sure if Silver 2-9 is the right move to start the combination, but maybe it is. Um, yeah, again, it's really important that uh, I not lose this square. So yeah, maybe with some other beginning to this, like I was concerned about this um, and thinking, well, I don't know. One idea is I sacrifice the silver outright for one or more pawns. Um, another is, well, yeah, I could promote this directly, and then we could allow the same combination, but they're up a silver. Um, I guess there might, if there were a retreating move, I'd be scared to play it here, because they're just going to drop another pawn and I have to retreat again. So I was also considering something like this, which looks crazy. So yeah, maybe not pawn 5-5, five five, but um, silver 2-9 looks reasonable. It's just hard to finish them, like a checkmate attack, without enough support. Um, so if I, they just casually place something like I'm wanting them to do, uh, I could casually place something too, now that I think about it. So yeah, Silver 2-9 looks... Like, you need to do something forceful like that. Um, so... Yeah, against once you've committed to this sacrifice, uh, you're completely in. There's no escaping it. That said... Um... How about this? <laughs> how about this one? 
And then we have all the previous variations, but one more piece joining the attack. I think here I probably would have put a pawn in the way and like tried to stand my ground or put a pawn in the way here. I don't know. Yeah, it's... I don't know. Engines will have to tell us more about this. The sack might have been the best move. It's just, gosh, this is a hard attack to demonstrate. But yeah, I don't like sacrificing until... Well, I say I don't like sacking, but then I do it anyway. So can I really be believed? Maybe. Um... Yeah, the rook drop and then rook takes. That took two moves, but it gave me a rook, which is not a great defensive piece. It's a better offensive piece. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, he thought he was going to sacrifice the other rook. Yeah, this rook sack, the way it was played, did catch me by surprise. Um... Yeah, this rook has been squirming around a lot, so I think it makes some sense to sacrifice it. Um, and then I wonder if silver 2-9 might be strong. So variation A is what if we take the silver? That looks kind of painful. Uh, say we did something dumb here. Uh, that would be checkmate. So... Yeah, we have to play with extreme caution here, but probably we're still mated somehow. Um, in fact, a silver drop there might be even stronger. But yeah, this looks like mate there. Yeah, so... Um, so what do we do against this? That's variation A is if we take the silver. Pretty simple and direct. Um, hmm. B, if we run this way. So it occurred to me, what if we do this? Uh, that's a little greedy to take the knight. So we can't take the knight there. But we could run here. And I don't see a mate, which is really weird. Yeah, seems I get out of it somehow, at least if the knight drops there. But there might be other moves. Um, yeah, this silver is just a hero, it really is. Um. So after this king runs, um, uh, maybe it is this after all. Um, looks kind of hard to hold on. Wait, I've got a bishop, so they have to keep checking me. I guess that's the motivation for sacrificing this rook, is that there was this fork which kind of leads back to my original point about, what about just blocking the diagonal? During the game I tried to read some of this and it was just way too much. Um, but yeah, I think at this point I have to block the file. Which kind of reinforces your point about, well, they should sack the rip before I block the file. Actually, you're probably right. And then what if we block this? Well, so you indicated silver 2-9 earlier. Actually, we have to lead with that, don't we? And then we block this. Um, I don't know. Yeah. It's an interesting position. My attack eventually will come, but when? <laughs> Um, I guess if I survive, that's when. 
My chances for survival... I don't know. But yeah, I really didn't like them moving the Rook over this way instead of trying to promote it. Um, I didn't think the Rook was well served running to the side like this. Because it gave me an extra tempo. Now it looks so complicated. I guess the reality of it is that Shogi's hard. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Like, before we start the attack, maybe we identify what's the weakness. These points seem pretty weak. Um, this is a weakness. So the Rook was not really hitting any of the weaknesses here. I had been imagining something like a night drop somewhere around here. Whether or not that's right, I, that's kind of sort of what I was looking at. But yeah, I think all the weaknesses are in the head of the castle. And so their attack just kind of missed the target. Um, so I was able to collect pieces and then uh, attack the Rook. This attempt to save the Rook from my Knight... Um, yeah, I think this somewhere around here was their last chance to play crazy stuff like this. I don't know exactly what, but um, at least they would get a Knight for their troubles, and maybe the Knight could pres uh, provide some serious counter-attacking chances somehow, because my castle's not completely settled. Um, instead, they try to protect the Rook, and note here that if they go this way, there's a fork right there. So, yeah, they just uh, settle on this fork instead, and then we take the Rook. And then we take this, and that's another fork. Um... They could play on uh, at this point. Um, yeah, it's very, very difficult for them to start attacking again. But, like, they have the slightest bit of initiative here. It, it's not going to go very far. Um, but they do have something of a solid castle. It's not super easy for me to break stuff, despite massive overwhelming material advantage it's i don't see a win here yet i mean yeah i could like pile on and very very likely i come out ahead here um but there's still some things they could do since they still continue to have a castle i haven't broken it yet uh, i have rooks which i don't feel like sacrificing to give back to them because that would help their attack uh but yeah, I could probably fortify my king or have my king run away. And, um, yeah. So, where was, like, was this rook move here the decisive blunder? Or was it somewhere else around here? Because, like, my rook's just hanging out. Um, yeah, they protect the rook once, they protect it again. And how did this all play out? So because they kept protecting this, I was able to find a vulnerable gold general here. Um, and I thought maybe they would find some way to exchange these somehow. I guess, did I misread something? I've been thinking about this. They t oh, wait. So bishops are opposing each other in this case. It's like, they can't do that, literally. Um, hmm. Interesting. Yeah, actually, I guess this promotion is stronger than I thought. So... I wonder what's the deal with this move. 
I mean, yeah, I have pieces that are attacking, but I don't understand. I could move my rook, or I could protect it or something. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. This might have been some other way to proceed, even though... Well, if I'm counting pieces, I have five generals, they have three. They have three knights, I have one. So, yeah, I gained a silver for a knight, but that's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, this is not something you enjoy playing, but maybe you play it anyway. Um... I'm not sure how I continue. Can I take that? If I do, gold takes. If I fork, rook up. Yeah, there's... I can't continue that pattern. If I move my horse away, not a whole lot happens here. So maybe this is the critical moment and they just faltered here uh, in the excitement of this attack. Or maybe they had some absolutely crushing attack in here. I faltered in advancing the knight and might have needed to like put something up here instead. I don't know. It was an exciting game. Um, so yeah, congratulations to everybody who finished their games in this tournament. Um, I know this tournament went on for a few months. So there were nine rounds, well, I think somewhere around 16 or 18 players in this division. And yeah, hopefully we've all learned something from this experience. Um, and maybe even improved a little bit at the game. This possibly might be my all-time high 81 dojo rating. Possibly. Um, so... Yeah, I seem to be focusing a little bit better than earlier. Um, I think some of that is just watching um, games that are offered by uh, actual pros, like our Shogi Harper um, channel, um, like uh, Morinaka's channel, and uh, there are several others out there. Um, thanks to Hidechi for paving the way for others to follow in that regard. So yeah, thanks uh, everyone for joining us, and hope you enjoyed this, and take care.